Hi folks. Well, of course we got another little new chapter here. This horse over here is six years old. Okay. The lady that had him, I've known her for quite a while. And this is one of those stories that is not so uncommon. So I'm just going to share with you and why we're doing what we're doing. Remember, he's six, all right? She bought a mare, or excuse me, somebody gave her a mare, I think. Well, the mare, of course, was pregnant. She didn't know it, so it had a foal. So when it had the foal, which is what you're looking at, it stayed, she got it weaned, and anyway, she ended up, when it was about two, probably taking it down to Jeremy, our friend next to the Tejon, and he started it for her because she didn't know how to start a colt. So then she brought it home. Then she said, she used the word reactive. All right. But the reality is, is that the mayor had a colt. Colt got started, brought the colt home. And when I came two years, three years later, the colt now is six and has been running with the mother in a small corral about this big for, I don't know, a couple years I'm guessing. But the point of this story is, is that the lady that owned them, who's a real nice lady, she was scared. Okay, so you take a colt and you decide to get it started. So now you take it to somebody and that somebody did a good job, because I know Jeremy, and then he sends the horse home. So now the owner's at home with the colt, and the colt does what colts do, no matter what it is. Move towards her, walk, run, whatever, doesn't matter. And it scares her. So now the horse knows that she's scared. Okay, the horse who was looking for a leader has no leader. So the horse says, fine, I'll take over, I got this. So she did groundwork and did, did a lot of it, I think, but she didn't want to ride the horse. And uh, so th there again, this is another example of a human with fear. So anyway, I ended up with the horse and I'm gonna use it for a project to show you the reality of this. So just remember, she gets a horse, it's pregnant, has a colt, there's the colt, it goes, gets started, comes back and ends up with its mother for two or three years in the same corral. So that's not a good thing. So I don't think it's that uncommon, but anyway, the horse has never really been weaned. So what I gotta do is get that horse to come back down to earth and understand that there's a fair leader waiting on him. Well, the, the thing about a horse like this, I know that six years old, if you take the thunder away, which is in the feet, then you can start to get their attention. I could spend months petting him and groundwork, which he's already done. She taught him to hook on really well, because as soon as he's in trouble, he hooks on. Then he'll spin around and kick at you. So anyway, I'll show you my first step with this horse. Davidson, Ellie, Ben, Gabby, everybody watch my left hand. That's what makes a good roper. is you got to be able to release. Now was the mare Arabian? Uh, Arab cross.
my left hand, I'm protecting my horse's neck. In case you couldn't hear that because of the jet going overhead, he was protecting his horse's neck from the slap of the rope by putting the coils between the rope and the horse's neck. I don't know if you can see it or not, but what I had to do is because I had a right hind foot, I had to get him going to the left so that my rope isn't in a bite on the hundu. And that's what makes the loop open up. So you can get your rope off, or they kick it off, I should say. So a big part of my project this morning is over. Just that few minutes of him giving that hind leg set it up to show me that he's got a brain. That's why you can't do this with rubber on the horse. Now, once again, just a matter of taking his feet away from him. talking earlier all you saw was chaos and so if you take a foot away they're not going to be able to run around if you lay your rope on the ground it'll always come out and work its way out where you just have the one foot in other words you get it tangled up in the hind legs just throw it, just let your your rope lay on the ground like this and it'll work its way out. Now I'm going to ask him to join me now because he's, remember I told you he, he knows how to hook on? Now I got to get him to understand it's from pressure and release, not just a cutesy habit of him coming in whenever he thinks he's in trouble.
remember, roping a good roper, if he's right-handed, which I am, it's all about your left hand, not your right hand. What am I doing with my left hand? That's what this amounts to. Anybody can rope if you practice. So now I'm pretty much straight on with this horse. And remember I told you he learned how to hook on the, the cutesy parlor trick and that was all great, but it was his idea. So now I'm telling him you need to yield to pressure and he's having to sort it out right. now. So you can watch a horse evolve with its brain. You see the spread of the hind legs? He's loaded up on his left front foot, all his weights on the left front. That's a, that's a 45 degree angle. Now the tongue going out, everybody, I've been over this a hundred times, but that doesn't mean they understand it and they're licking their lips and everything's wonderful. That just means he's nervous. There's, there's different ways of a horse moving their mouth. So here goes the, my left hand again, and pressure. Now he has to decide what he wants to do. And remember, when I'm doing this rope and I'm thinking about lunch, I'm not getting in his wash machine, I'll guarantee you. I don't, I don't do chaos. So I'll just make it a little uncomfortable because see, that's, that's not yielding. That's called bracing. Now his left front foot is going to have to get on the payroll meaning his left front foot's going to step towards me. I'm going to put pressure on. Now see where his tail's out? He's not scared. That's more aggression than it is fear. There's the left front foot. That's what I'm talking about. Do you want to just, as a review, go over how the horse is, is drawn to your horse, too? You just did. Thank you. That's exactly right. You see, he's not liking any of this. Head to the outside, which incidentally goes right back to my lunging <laughs> story. The brain is gone. But the end of the story is you're going to have to do this on foot, right? When he's prepared. Yeah, I'll do it on foot when I'm done. So he just keeps leaving. <coughs> and so do I. Just the opposite way, that's all. I just keep reminding him that you probably ought to check in. That's a horse leaving. Leaving is a bad choice. And see, I already know, folks, he's going to be following me around. I already know it. It's just a matter of giving him a chance to get rid of whatever is not working real well for him. And you're watching it. Well, I'm moving my horse around, he's watching it, and he's having this opportunity to look. And all he has to do is figure it out. Now, watch me bend his spine. Okay, by bending the spine, instead of pulling straight, it allowed him to move his feet. Everything you do, from riding to getting the mail to tipping the steer over, it has to come out the bottom of their feet. And it took me a while to get that concept, but once you get it, you'll understand why I rope horses. Now I'm getting ready to leave again. I'm asking him to come with me. If he can't make it, this doesn't matter. It's not like I failed.
this is him honestly having a hard time. You can see the hind feet where they are. That's me giving the rope back. I see him check out again. It's not going to be that cutesy little hook on and stay there. Oh my God, you're my best friend. I didn't know how this works. He has to get all that out of his system right there, what you're seeing right now. And I watch them, they'll get mad. Then they'll get mad. Then they'll get over it. Then they'll get mad. Then they'll get over it. And then pretty soon they're like, you know what? I'm probably better off just going with him. Because he ain't leaving. There's the horse connection. See, it's not that I'm so handy. You see that stance again? I'm going to move over a little bit and bring his skull to me. There. Now me, once again, I'm thinking about something else. And I'm not going to get all bothered or worried about what he's thinking about because I don't really care. Now if you exhaust a horse, you don't teach him anything. So he has to have time to catch his wind. That was all self-induced, incidentally, all that dripping sweat. I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Now I'm going to move my horse and see how much he wants to check in. I'm looking at the tips of his ears and I'm saying, okay, we're leaving. Now you get to make up your mind right now. It's the first time today I've touched him. Right here is where I want them. I don't want them way up there by my horse's head. Now, I'm going to change direction, so you probably ought to join me. Think. 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 Now, see how my rope's all wrapped up? Now, watch. I'm going to lay it on the ground. It's not wrapped up anymore. That's, you know, a ranch horse has to be able to handle a rope anywhere and everywhere. Okay. And then what's real, folks, is that he's going to have to make a decision. Do I want to be with him because I want to be with him? Now, here's a, here's a different thing. This is not a horse off the range. He's a backyard domestic. Dink. That's all he is. Okay. When I get on foot, he's going to be actually more comfortable on this particular horse because he was taught the parlor trick of hooking on all the time. Well, the only difference is I have a rope on his foot instead of just nothing. So anyway, the tunnel. The tunnel is what you watched this morning. And what he did was, I already knew this is where he was going to end up before I started. And I'm not psychic, I just knew that's what's going to happen. Now if it's 10 minutes or 2 hours, it's irrelevant to me. So this is the first chapter of many on this horse. So I'm, what I'll do is I'll let him work that foot rope off, and then I'm done. That's how much it... I typically... On a perfect day, I spend about 10 minutes working with a horse. And they're actually relieved. What are you going to name him? I'm not. You're not naming him? Well, you can put it out there. Uh-oh. If you guys have, uh, save your Kellogg's box tops and send in a name, and the winner gets a <laughs> submarine that you put in the bathtub with with um, Arm and Hammer baking soda, if anybody remembers those. Where are we going to get one of those? Well, I don't know. That way I don't
don't have to pay off. Do you want to get give your uh, requirements for horse names? Well, typically, personally, I like one syllable. That's all I like on a horse's name. And not ending in Y or IE. Nothing in Y or IE. <laughs> Nothing out of a Disney movie. Spirit? Spirit, yeah. <laughs> There's a good one. So I, the moral of the day, folks, is it gets ugly, then it gets pretty. So just, you know, don't get discouraged when you want to make a horse. But don't make a horse if you're scared of horses. It's not going to happen. example of what I was telling you about. The rope is running the wrong direction. So every time he steps, it's still in a bite. As soon as that hondu walks around the hoof, then the rope will come off. And uh, those of you that doctor in the pasture, as long as you got a big enough pasture, you can appreciate that many, many times you've tracked a cow and got a rope off their foot. Sometimes you go a little farther than you want, but if you know, if you're headed for home, who cares? Anyway, life is good. You've heard me mention the Tejon. That's an hour away from her, here. That's the most biggest historic ranch we got in this end of the country. And it goes back to a land grant and it just goes from there. And it was famous because it had an all Indian crew at one time and really, really good hands and a lot of bridle horsemen. But Don Jesus Lopez, he t was 20 some years old and they made him in charge of the sheep, which was hundred and some thousand head. And then they made him run in the ranch and he just said, how can I do this at this age? Because everybody's older than me. And the guy that made him the manager said, you'll be fine. And he was, and he was there 30 some years. But the big test they put on him was he took, I'm pretty sure it was 1,500 head of sheep from the Tejon, which is north of Los Angeles, about 50 miles. And he delivered them to Green River, Utah, where they were put on a train and taken to Cheyenne, Wyoming. So he trailed them from the Tejon to Green River and did a good job. And when he got back, that's why they made him in charge, because he had to think. He had to think a lot. And that's the part of the history of the Tejon. The Tejon history never stops. Now, isn't our friend Jeremy somehow related to one of those guys? Well, I think he is. We'll have to ask him sometime. But I think he's part of that. Legacy. I'm, I'm positive he is. He goes back, way back. His family goes way back to the Spanish days. So thanks for watching. Kind of a different demeanor now, huh? A little different horse now. I guess something to remember too is how long it took me. Okay, it doesn't take very long. This video's been running for 28 minutes.
Well, there you go. That's how it's done. Thank you.